you're gonna hear the word CAD a lot, especially if you are new to the jewelry trade or if you have designs of your jewelry sketched up. CAD allows you to see the best quality 3D visualization and or high definition video of the jewelry that you've created. And I just wanna talk about a few things that you should be aware of before you decide on getting your CADs finalized because then it will just make everything that comes afterwards, such as the production of the sample and such, a whole lot easier. Stay tuned to the end where I'll be sharing with you some tips on how to find the CAD designer that will suit your needs. If it's your first time watching, hi, my name is Kim. I'm owner of Tide Design Distributors. We're a third generation family business where our manufacturing plant is in Thailand, headquarters in London and the US, and we specialize in manufacturing high-end sterling silver and gold jewelry for jewelry designers. So as you guys know, my business specializes in mass production of jewelry. And I feel that over the years, some of the jewelry designers who have come to us don't realize the importance of having perfect designs of their CADs finalized before coming to us. Because if the CAD is not perfect, then you could end up with a sample that you're not happy with. And ultimately, it could just mean you going back to the drawing board or back to the CAD, which could cost you time and money. So how do you make sure that you get the perfect CAD from the start? So let's assume that you have a design in mind and you've sketched it out and you're ready for the CAD to be produced. Here are the things that you should bear in mind. Firstly, make sure that you know the exact dimensions and measurements of that piece. So whether that's the height, the width, the diameter, the thickness, it's really important that you know what sort of shape and how big or small it's going to be. A lot of my customers even use Play-Doh or plasticine to just mold something physical in place. So just make sure you know what all those specifications are. And that includes pieces that have stone set in them as well. So make sure you know what carat size or in millimeter the diameter of what stones. Remember, the bigger and heavier the piece, the more expensive it's going to be. Because if it's heavier, then there's going to be more silver content, which means that the price is just going to go up. A lot of the times with my customers, when we look at um, cost estimations, after I do um, a quotation on a design, once they give me a finalized CAD file and we find that that it's a little bit too expensive and they're willing to reduce, say, the thickness of the design, then a lot of the times that's what we'll do. But just make sure that if you are thinking about reducing the weight of the piece by reducing, say, the thickness of it, that it doesn't distort the detail or the aesthetic look of the design that you want to achieve. Also, you don't want to go too thin because remember that silver is soft. If it's 925 that we're using, so that's sterling silver, that's 92.5% is pure silver. The rest is alloys mixed together to just make it a little bit harder. So let's say it's 999 or 100% pure silver, then it's going to be really soft. So again, just make sure that you're not going too thin. Also, try to envision what it looks like as a jewelry piece. I've had customers send me sketches, for example, and I can't really figure out if it's a pendant or if it's an earring. If it's a pendant, for example, illustrate where you want the bail or the jump ring to be on the piece. Or if it's a stud earring or a drop earring, where you want the post to be at the back or where you want it to hang if it's going to be a hook earring. All this information will really help the CAD designer and therefore manufacturer when it comes to producing the samples. Again, if you want a particular texture on the piece, show as much visuals and images as possible. The more, the better. For example, I've had customers that said hammered effect, but there's different types of shapes and depths of hammered effect. And vocabulary can be a bit mixed. So whether you call it sandblasted, matte, organic finish, it can all be a bit misleading. So again, just show as much visual as possible. So here's a tip on finding CAD designers. I listed a few resources in my video where and how to find a jewelry manufacturer supply. So there's a couple of resources there, but I really find that Artworks is a really good um, site that I've used and my customers have used. There's a lot of professional and talented people there that can help with all different angles of your business. And some of them are really cheap. So do some research because some CADs designers, they might charge per image that they're designing or by hour. So the more amendments that you made, the pricier that it might be. And you need to look out for the software names such as Rhino and Matrix. Those are the main software that jewelry CAD designers are going to be using, but also what suppliers and manufacturers like myself that we're used to using when it comes to the next step in making that sample. I hope you found that helpful. Please stay tuned to my latest videos by clicking that subscribe, like or comment in the section below and I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.